Okay, so let's talk about Wonder Woman 1984. Is it as bad as people make it out to be? Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Rewind, Relive, and Review. I'm Rick. This is the show where I talk about movies, TV shows, and music. And today, I want to go over Wonder Woman 1984. Now, there's a lot of people that will say that this was a bad movie. Some people will say it was horrible. Some people even say it was a hot, steaming pile of garbage. But you know me. I'm going to watch it anyway because I want to judge for myself. And I encourage everybody to watch things for themselves too because you might see something in it that other people don't. So, let me tell you a little bit about the movie and then let me give you my take on it. It came out in 2020. It's an American superhero film based on the DC Comics character Wonder Woman. And I really, really liked the first Wonder Woman movie. This one, I'm trying to like it, but there's a lot of flaws. The film was again directed by Patty Jenkins and it was from a script that she wrote with Jeff Johns and Dave Callum. Once again, Gal Gadot stars as Diana Prince, Wonder Woman, alongside Chris Pine, Kristen Wiig, Pedro Pascal, Robin Wright, and Connie Nielsen. Obviously, it's set in 1984, and it follows Diana and her past love, Steve Trevor, as they face off against Maxwell Lord and Cheetah. One of the first problems I had with it was bringing Steve Trevor back. I really don't like it when characters who've died, especially heroically, manage to come back in future movies. I know it's a comic book, but why can't the dead stay dead and we bring new characters into the forefront? Okay, it was a clever way to bring Trevor back using the quote unquote dream stone. And that's the central plot of the movie, how this stone can make whatever you wish or desire happen, but it also takes something in return. Good premise there. Everywhere else, it starts to go horribly, horribly wrong. Kristen Wiig has a great portrayal as Barbara. I like it, it's believable, sometimes comical, but very accurate. Where I think she fell flat was the cheetah part. It just didn't work for me on a couple different levels. If this and this alone was part of the problems in the movie, I could live with it. But where it goes really bad their use of the time period, for one, 1984, in the 80s, I understand things were a little bit different than they are now, but a lot of it was too hokey. And believe me, I was around for the 80s. It wasn't that hokey. I think they just took it a little too far on some things. And then there's Pedro Pascal's performance as Max Lord. Way, way too over the top. I wasn't really feeling that performance, and I think he could have did so much better if he had played it in a more evil or close to the vest way, even a tortured soul kind of way. But he was too over the top. That performance really, really is what brung this movie down. Now, I'm not gonna give too much of the plot away because I still am the kind of guy that says, hey, see it for yourself. But I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of people that are divided on this movie as to where, whether or not they either, I'm not gonna say liked it or disliked it. I'm gonna say that they held out hope for it or thought it was straight trash. I'm one of those people that held out hope for it and there are parts of it that I liked, but as a whole, it didn't live up to the hype. It wasn't anywhere near as good as the first one. It's not as bad as people thought, but it's still bad. 
All right, let me give you some of the Blu-ray specs. Obviously, it's in 1080, high definition. The audio is Dolby Atmos True HD, and it has all your standard subtitles, English, French, Spanish. It's got a few special features on here. Um, scene studies, they use the mall and the uh, open road. The making of Wonder Woman 1984, expanding the Wonder Woman mythos. Meet the Amazons, gag reels, then there's a Wonder Woman 1984 retro remix and a small feature about Gal and Kristen. Also comes with a uh, digital code and you can stream or download on uh, Movies Anywhere. The movie looks good. On a high definition TV, it looks good. The sound is pretty good. I have no problem with that. So as far as the way it looks and the way it sounds, it's great. That part of the presentation. The movie itself didn't work for me. Again, I'm not gonna tell you to watch it or not watch it, that's up to you. Judge for yourself. It is 151 minutes, so keep in mind, that's how much time you're gonna use watching this movie. And if you don't like it, that's 151 minutes that you're not going to get back. On a four star basis, I can only give this Blu-ray two. And the two is for the picture and sound. If the movie plot and some of the acting had been better, I could go so much higher with this. Unfortunately, can't do it. And I know what you're thinking, well, you got the movie, Rick. Yeah, I bought the movie. I've got all the uh, DC and Marvel movies. So this looks good on the shelf next to the others. 10, 15, 20 years from now, when I'm pulling movies off the shelf and watching them, when I reach for Wonder Woman, I'm gonna reach for just that, Wonder Woman. I probably won't reach for 1984 as often, if any time, that's just me. But every now and then, just for a laugh, or just because, I've got it, it's there, not gonna lie, there's some movies in my collection that are less than stellar. Unfortunately, this is one of them. We already know that they've signed on to do a third one, and we can only hope that the third time is the charm and they get back to what got them where they were in the first place. Okay guys, that's all the time I have for today. But I will say, if you haven't seen it, like I said before, give it a try. You might like it a lot better than others. I think it was okay at best, could have been better. We know there's gonna be a third one. Let's hope they get back on track. In the meantime, stay positive, stay blessed. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Talk to you soon.